Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Professor Chen. Yeah, I hope you, s you still remember me. Um, today is the uh, uh, first time we have this uh, uh, video uh, uh, course, and uh, we will talk about Philippines. And uh, we are very glad today we will have uh, a friend and uh, a student from NSHU, uh, Yumiko. Yeah, please introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, good morning. My name is Yumiko Yamada and I'm from the Philippines. And currently I am in my second year of PhD under the College of Veterinary Medicine, um, Graduate Institute of Microbiology and Public Health. Hmm. Okay, so uh, you like Taichung? Yes, I like it very much. Okay, it's okay. more than Taiwan. You, think a, here in you think a Taiwan and the Philippines are very similar or quite different? They are quite similar and quite different in different aspects. Okay. Yeah. Uh, later we will ask you how different uh, sure, we are. Sure, no problem, okay. Professor. Yeah. So uh, I, want, I don't know uh, uh, how many of you have ever been to the Philippines. I've been there once, uh, only in Manila. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know this country is much, much bigger than Taiwan. Yes. And uh, many islands. Yes, it's uh, totally and uh, very beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so uh, we want to uh, have an idea, and uh, we want to first uh, know uh, a bit about your country. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you to uh, first introduce a little bit about your country, mm -hmm. some very general idea. Okay, how big? What's the population? And uh, uh, how many islands? Mm -hmm. Okay, geography, all those very general information. And uh, we want to learn a little bit about history. We know that the uh, Philippines has been uh, colonized by different countries. Yes. Uh, first by uh, uh, Spaniards, by yes. Spain, and uh, uh, then America, yes. and uh, then Japan during mm -hmm. World War II. Yes. And you became independent uh, mm -hmm. after uh, 1946, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so we'd like to ask you to introduce uh, history to us so we have some general idea about your country. Okay, so first and foremost, Philippine um, has uh, officially known as the Republic of the Philippines and this country um, has a capital named Manila and this, al this country is also um, approximately have around 108 million people living right now and cur our currency is also known as the Philippine Peso so a lot of Taiwanese would really love to go to the Philippines because their money, um, Taiwanese will be very, very rich when they go to the Philipp to oh, our okay, island. Okay. Yeah, so um, our island is really cheap and beautiful to be uh, to, to good and a good place to visit as well. So um, currently our island has 7,107 islands mm -hmm. and they are being divided into three, the northern part, central part, and then the southern part. So which part are you from? The central the part. Central part. Yeah. Okay. central part of the Philippines will be mostly like the Taichung of Taiwan. Um, unfortunately, Taichung is very mountainous. And on our island, it's very um, full of beaches. So if you want to go for a lot of relaxation and everything, you can visit my island, which is in the central area. So a lot of people will going to go in my island. So you, all of you are very much welcome to visit my island as well. The Philippines. Philippines as an island state. The Philippines in Filipino is known as Pilipinas and officially known as the Republic of the Philippines. It is a sovereign island country in Southeast Asia situated in the Western Pacific Ocean. Its capital is Manila and is composed of 7,107 islands. As on 2019, Philippines has a total population of around 108.12 million with Tagalog and English as an official language alongside with the 19 dialects. Currency of the Philippines is known as the Philippine Peso. The overall land area is comparable to that of Arizona and the Philippines is divided into three major islands namely Luzon as the Northern Philippines, Visayas as the Central Philippines, as Southern Philippines. The recorded history of the Philippines begins with the creation of the first written document called Laguna Copperplate Inscription in 900. Prior to the LCI, 
The earliest record of the Philippine island correspond with the arrival of Ferdinand Magellan, which marks the beginning of the Spanish colonial period. Ferdinand Magellan is a European explorer sailing for Spain. The Philippines takes its name from Philip II, who was king of Spain during the Spanish colonization of the islands. Philippines was colonized by Spaniards for 333 years and ended with an outbreak of the Philippine Revolution in 1898, which marks the beginning of the American colonial era of Philippine history. American rule in the Philippines for almost 40 years and followed by the Japanese Empire during World War II. United States formally recognized the independence of the Republic of the Philippines on July 4, 1946, under the t treaty signed between the two governments. In November 1965, Ferdinand E. Marcos was elected to the presidency. In September 72, Marcos declared martial law, claiming that it was the last defense against the rising disorder caused by increasingly violent student demonstrations. The alleged threats of communist insurgency by the new Communist Party of the Philippines and the Muslim separatist movement of the Moro National Liberation Front. With the People Power Revolution in 1986, Corazon Aquino's assumption into power marked the restoration of democracy in the country. Following the 1986 People Power Revolution, Philippines enjoyed its democracy. Now, Rodrigo Duterte is the sixth and the current president of the Fifth Republic of the Philippines. The Philippines celebrated its Independence Day on June 12, 1898. This independence signifies our freedom from Spanish colonization and the beginning of our own government. After 1898, Philippines government became the puppet republic of United States and Japan. Finally, in 1946, Filipinos achieved their absolute independence and discretion on their own government. Lupang Hinirang is our national anthem. It was composed by Julian Felipe, a musician from Cavite, on the occasion of our independence from Spaniards. Initially, it was entitled Marcha Filipina Magdalo. Our first president, Aguinaldo, who was exiled in Hong Kong, designed our flag, which is composed of three, of three colors, a sun, and three stars. The three stars signify the three major islands of our country as mentioned before, whereas the sun with eight rays stands for freedom and eight provinces of the Philippines respectively. As for the political system of the Philippines, the Philippines is a republic with a presidential form of the government wherein power is equally divided among the three branches, namely the executive, legislative, and judicial. One basic corollary in a presidential system of government is the principle of separation of powers wherein legislation belongs to Congress, execution to the executive, and settlement of legal controversies to the judiciary. The legislative branch is authorized to make laws, alter and repel them through the power vested in the Philippine Congress. This institution is divided into the Senate and the House of the Representative. The executive branch carries out laws, it is composed of the president, vice president, and his cabinet. These departments form a large portion of the country's bureaucracy. The judicial branch evaluates laws. It holds the power to settle controversies involving rights that are legally demandable and enforceable. This branch determines whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion 
amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part and instrumentality of the government. It is made up of a Supreme Court and lower courts. The President as well as the Vice President are elected by direct popular vote and serve a term of six years. The Constitution grants the President authority to appoint his cabinet and his cabinet became the part of the executive branch. This is the official 2016 presidential election results. Rudy Duterte won the presidential election having 15 million votes and L Lenny Robredo as the vice president. Each government faced a lot of problems and these were the three common political problems encountered by the Philippine government. First is the corruption. Second will be the human rights violation, and third will be the political dynasty. In this figure, showed the government's action plan and eradication of corruption is the most important aspect of governance that should be addressed. Despite those hurdles encountered by the Philippine government, it, is, it still believes for its vision that by 2040, the Philippines shall be a prosperous, predominantly middle-class society where no one is poor. Our peoples will enjoy long and healthy lives, are smart and innovative, and will live in a high-trust society. Now we uh, uh, come to talk about our next topic. Mm. We talk about politics. Yeah. And we know that the uh, uh, Philippine is a democratic country. Yes. But uh, being a democratic country doesn't mean that you have no problem. Yes. You know, even in Taiwan, we are also proud of ourselves being a democratic <laughs> country. But uh, we also complain about politics all the time. Yeah. And uh, so I would like to, uh, to ask you to introduce a little bit about the political system of your country mm -hmm. and uh, how the leaders are elected and uh, uh, how do people feel about politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please. Okay, so first and foremost, um, Philippine is been designed to follow the American um, political system. And aside from that, Philippine politics system is very interesting. So let's watch more in the video. As for the political system of the Philippines, the Philippines is a republic with a presidential form of the government, where in power is equally divided among the three branches, namely the executive, legislative, and judicial. One basic corollary in a presidential system of government is the principle of separation of powers, wherein legislation belongs to Congress, execution to the executive, and settlement of legal controversies to the judiciary. The legislative branch is authorized to make laws, alter and repeal them through the power vested in the Philippine Congress. This institution is divided into the Senate and the House of the Representative. The executive branch carries out laws. It is composed of the President, Vice President, and his Cabinet. These departments form a large portion of the country's bureaucracy. The judicial branch evaluates laws. It holds the power to settle controversies involving rights that are legally demandable and enforceable. This branch determines whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part and instrumentality of the government. It is made up of a Supreme Court and lower courts. The president as well as the vice president are elected by direct popular vote and serve a term of six years. The constitution grants the president authority to appoint his cabinet and his cabinet became the part of the executive branch. This is the official 2016 presidential election results. Rudy Duterte won the presidential election, 
having 15 million votes, and L Lenny Robredo as the vice president. Each government faced a lot of problems, and these were the three common political problems encountered by the Philippine government. First is the corruption, second will be the human rights violation, and third will be the political dynasty. In this figure, showed the government's action plan and eradication of corruption is the most important aspect of governance that should be addressed. Despite those hurdles encountered by the Philippine government, it, is, it still believes for its vision that by 2040, the Philippines shall be a prosperous, predominantly middle-class society where no one is poor. Our peoples will enjoy long and healthy lives, are smart and innovative, and will live in a high-trust society. Now, let, uh, let's get into another topic, mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, economy, okay? Uh, we know that the uh, Philippines uh, is also one of the most uh, uh, active and dynamic economy in Asia. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, you also uh, have a lot of trade with other countries. And uh, on the other hand, you are also very famous for the service sector, mm -hmm. uh, finance and other service sectors also very good. So I would like to ask you to introduce a little bit about the economic situation in your country and also the trade and other issues related to economy, okay? Okay. Um, first, the Philippines has been known to be the sleeping tiger of Asia. And aside from that, um, Philippines now are starting to catch up with the other um, countries in Asia as well. And more information can be seen in the PowerPoint presentation. As for the Philippine economic and industry, The country's gross domestic product, or GDP, grew year-on-year year by 5% in the second quarter of 2019. The main drivers of growth for the quarter are trade and repair of motor vehicles, motorcycles, personal and household goods, manufacturing, and other services. Among the major economic sectors, services had the fastest growth with 7.1%. Industry registered a growth of 3.7%. Agriculture, hunting, forestry, and fishing had a growth of 0.6%. The net primary income or NPI from the rest of the world and the gross national income or GNI grew by 3.1% and 5.1% 5 5 respectively. With the country's projected population reaching 107.9 million in the second quarter of 2019, per capita GDP grew by 3.8%. Meanwhile, per capita GNI and per capita household final consumption expenditure or HFCE posted corresponding growths of 3.5% and 3.9%. For foreign direct investments, it showed an increase of 56.7% in 2018 when compared with 2017. In this figure, the major export partners of the Philippines in 2019 is the United States of America, while the major import partner of the Philippines is China. Like most other Southeast Asian regions, Philippines too has a history of European colonization. It was a colony of Spain and the USA. The country is now home to multiple cultures and ethnic groups. It is also looked upon as a perfect example of mixed economy. Though a fast-growing economy, Philippines still need to address the issues of poverty unemployment, and poor infrastructure. Here is some information on the economic problems of the Philippines. First is the unemployment. 
Only one-fourth of the Filipinos that enter the labor force are able to find good jobs in the country, and the rest of them find jobs overseas, leave the labor force, or end up becoming unemployed or underemployed. Thus, three-fourths of the workers are, are unemployed or informally employed with lack of opportunities to find good jobs. Though good jobs are being generated, there's a need to generate jobs at a much faster rate to be able to bring down the unemployment rate. Many of the unemployed individuals are college graduates. Many wait for job opportunities abroad and many families depend on remittances from family members who are staying abroad. Even though Philippines is a fast-growing economy, there's been just a minor decline in the incidence of poverty. Poverty is very much linked to unemployment. Unfortunately, the growth is restricted to the BPO, retail, and real estate sector, and a large number of Filipinos remain without jobs. On top of that, natural calamities further push people below the poverty line. Thus, economic disparity is a common feature. In general, the gains from higher economic group have not really trickled down to the poor. In the first semester of 2018, a family of five needed no less than 7,337 pesos on average to meet the family's basic food needs for a month. This amount is the food threshold. On the other hand, no less than 10,481 pesos on average was needed to meet both basic food and non-food needs of a family of five in a month. This amount is the poverty threshold. The, these are 10.9% higher than the food and poverty threshold from the first semester of 2015. Food threshold is the minimum income required to meet the basic food needs, satisfying the nutritional requirements set by the Food and Nutrition Research Institute to ensure that one remains economically and socially productive. On the other hand, poverty threshold is the minimum income required to meet the basic food and non-food needs such as clothing, fuel, light and water, housing, rental of occupied dwelling units, transportation and communication, health and education expenses, non-durable furnishing, household operations, and personal care and effects. Also, infra infrastructure is one of the basic biggest challenges. In the Global Competitiveness Report of 2014 to 2015 of the World Economic Forum, Philippines didn't fare well in terms of the quality of the overall infrastructure. It ranked at 91 among 144 countries. This can be attributed to underinvestment in infrastructure. In order to host global companies, Philippines will have to pay more attention to enhancing the infrastructure. As per the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business 2015 report, Philippines rank only 95 out of 189 economies. Thus, the policy makers should take steps to attract global companies or investors. Philippines was the third highest recipient of migrant remittances in 2013, after India and China. According to the Philippine Central Bank, remittances from overseas Filipino workers or OFWs reach 25.1 billion USD in 2013. It was 7.6% higher than the remittances from last year and accounted for 8.4% of the Philippine gross domestic product in 2013. The country heavily relies on these funds. Their economic growth can primarily be associated to the remittances from the overseas Filipino workers as well as the growth in the business process outsourcing sector. Also, one cannot rule out 
that the growth is connected to the global economy. In the event of any crisis, economic growth is bound to suffer. Thus, great attention has to be paid to addressing to the internal problems of the economy and enhancing domestic-oriented growth. A policy of removing structural impediments to growth has to be adopted with lesser focus on foreign investors and exporters. Beside the aforementioned issues, corruption is another aspect that needs to be taken care of. The current administration needs to prepare an industrialization program that encourages value addition manufacturing or services and builds Filipino-owned industries. Being overly dependent on global economy or remittances from Filipinos living abroad will make the nation vulnerable to external shocks. Thus, the aim should be to encourage inclusive growth in the country by creating employment opportunities and reducing poverty. Despite the hurdles in the economic aspect of the Philippines, the government still, ha still believe that we will be able to regain our rightful place as one of the most progressive countries in this region. The Philippines would become not just a major be beneficiary but also a major contributor to Asia's rise to prosperity in 2050. Okay, uh, after uh, talk about history, uh, politics, and economy, now we get to uh, uh, see the culture and society of the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, what is Philippine? Yeah, and why make Philippine unique? Uh, because uh, we see when we see someone from Philippine, we 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 know oh this is a Filipino, mm -hmm. yeah, very uh, active, yeah, very happy, yeah. And uh, uh, in terms of a uh, religion, uh, language, and other things, uh, you are also different from other Asian countries. So I would like to ask you to introduce your country, uh, talking more about the culture and society. And if it's possible, talk uh, us, uh, also t uh, tell us more about your food and uh, also your festival. Yeah, please. Philippines is really known to be the happiest people in the world. And I agree with you, Professor, yeah. that when you see a happy people, you will, also, you will always think that uh, he or she is a Filipino. And aside from that, um, we are really more like, um, due to the influence of the other um, countries as well, you, we, will, we will have a lot of various culture and a very interesting one for you to find out. As for the culture and society of the Philippines, here show the different ethnic groups found in the Philippines. Visayan is the largest ethnic group existed, having 32.9% of the total population, followed by Tagalog, Moro, Ilocano, Bicolano, Kapampangan, Igorot, Pangasinense, and Chinese. The Philippines is a secular nation with a constitutional separation of church and state. As a result of Spanish cultural influence, the Philippines is one of the predominantly Roman Catholic countries in Asia. More than 80% of the population are Christians. The indigenous church, called Iglesia Ni Cristo, also founded in the early 20th century. Islam was brought to the southern Philippines in the 15th century from Brunei to the west. The religion was already well established in Sulu Archipelago and Mindanao by the time of European contact, and it had a growing, fa growing population following around Manila. Small numbers of Filipinos practice Buddhism or local religions. Buddhism is associated primarily with communities of Chinese descent. Local religions are maintained by some of the rural indigenous people. This figure shows the population structure of the Philippines, which signifies that Philippines is a very young country in the aspect of population. Philippine culture is the hot pot of Asia. Architecture in the Philippines reveals Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, 
Western, and Native Influences. University of Santo Tomas in Manila is known to be the oldest school in our country, for it was established during the Spanish era. Calle Crisologo in Vigan, Ilocos, is also a place where you can be able to witness how great the Spaniards play a significant role in our culture. Cebu Taoist tem Temple is influenced by Chinese, as well as the Manila Chinatown, which known to be the oldest Chinatown in the world. Lastly, the Japanese Garden and Rizal Park is influenced by the Japanese. Once value plays a significant role in one, next, Filipinos also have this Demayan system where we show sympathy for people who lost their loved ones. As for the negative Filipino traits, one is the bahala na attitude, which is a Filipino trait characterized by retreating or withdrawal from certain undertaking and leaving everything to God to interfere and determine the outcome of his deeds. Colonial complex is a Filipino value of showing high admiration and preference to foreign produced goods over local, over local ones. Crab mentality is an attempt to pull down someone who has achieved success beyond the others. This is done out of jealousy and insecurity. Here are some of the Filip famous Filipino people, namely Rodrigo Roa Duterte, President of the Philippines, Catriona Gray, Miss Universe 2018, Lea Salonga, who is a singer, and Manny Pacquiao, who is a professional boxer. Philippine cuisine has evolved over several centuries from its Malayo-Polynesian origins to become a mixed cuisine with many Hispanic, Chinese, American, and other Asian influences that have been adapted to local ingredients and the Filipino palate to create distinctively Filipino dishes. Dishes range from a very simple, like a meal of fried salted fish and rice, to the elaborate, such as the paellas and coxidos created for fiestas. And the most popular food in our country is lechon. Filipino taste buds tends to favor robust flavors, but the cuisine is not as spicy as those of its neighbors. Filipinos like to party a lot also. There are some of our festivals, such as Coconut Festival, Sinulog Festival, Dinagyang Festival, Pahiyas Festival, Bangus Festival, Mascara Festival, Ati Atihan Festival, Panagbenga Festival, Tegtigan Terakan Festival. Festival is also a culture we adapted from Spain. Mostly, we held this festival in honor of the saints of the Roman Catholic Church. I hope you all enjoy today's lecture. Yeah, uh, Philippine. Uh, a young and dynamic uh, Asian tiger. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, I only been to Philippines once. Uh, very had a very good impression. And in Taiwan, we also see a lot of friends from Philippines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also students uh, are from Philippines are studying in Taiwan and and the NCSU. So, uh, like to ask uh, uh, Yumiko to uh, say a few words mm -hmm. to our audience. Yeah, please. Yes. Uh, uh, professor, I disagree with you that you've been to the Philippines one time because that trip uh, for today's uh, course, you've been to the Philippines again. So it's already uh, your second time for the Philippines. Okay, good. And for the people who have been here, to, uh, haven't been to the Philippines, um, it's already your first time to be in the Philippines when you watch this video for just for free. So hope you will guys basic, uh, physically visit Philippines and you are very much welcome in our very warm island in in the Southeast Asia. Thank you. Thank you.